Hi, my name is Ndebisi Ubirije. I'm the co-founder and CTO of AfriX. Welcome to my session on this COM42 incident management, management conference. I'll be talking about AI power detection and monitoring of social engineering driven fraudulent payments in remittances. Let's start with the growing threats of social engineering in remittance fin fintech. Social engineering is a situation where there's a manipulation of individuals to gain access to sensitive information or perform actions that benefit a fraudster. In the remittance world, this could involve tracking someone into tracking someone on their email and also tricking them to give access, give the fraudulent or the fraudster access to an innocent person's email, social media pages, etc. And basically, once this is done, it it essentially tricks the victim into authorizing payments for these fraudsters. Social engineering is like a circle, right? Usually fraudsters start by gathering information, right? After gathering information, they could send you a phishing email, they could buy data online of their potential victims. And then once they've done that, they now establish relationships, right? They try to get in touch with their victims and to establish like a connection, right? So the victims don't become suspicious at all when the exploitation starts. So after establishing a relationship, it goes on to exploitation. So at this stage, the victims don't realize they are, they are in the, the nets of this fraud stars. And then the next thing is execution. This fraud stars executes their plan. It could be to trick the customers trick the victims into making the payments online through Amazon, through eBay, uh, etc. But before we start going deep into what these exploitations are, uh, let's look at AI in, in fintech. In, let's look at some key statistics of what the impact of AI have right now in the sector. Basically, it's transforming the sector as it's called. We've seen chat GPT, we've seen cloud from Anthropic uh, and the other LLMs out there today. And these AIs can help give us valuable insight into the adoption of FinTech. And I think it's just the, it's just the tip of the iceberg um, right now. Some of the key things we've, we've seen is there's exploit, exploitive, explosive growth, right? The global fintech market is currently worth 340 billion, with the AI segment valued at 44 billion dollars. Now, the AI's share in fintech is expected to reach 15 billion over the next five years, and then there's widespread adaptation. 72 percent of companies that utilize utilizes AI in one of their key and business functions, and others are planning to even expand to use it and expand on using data technologies and AI technologies for their businesses. Now, also it helps in key cost savings. Implementing AI in businesses, we have seen that it saves companies, businesses, millions of dollars. So it's, for example, implementing identity verification for banks is predicted to $900 million in operational cost reduction. This is massive, right? Onboarding processes are now digital, and onboarding process uh, would be close to 29 million hours in onboarding process for banks and most key fintechs today. This is massive. And this also improves the customer service section of these companies. We can see a chatbot that started years ago. We've seen virtual assistants from chat GPT, real time voice communication. I'm excited and I think the feature is exciting for real time customer interactions. It reduces cost of inquiries. And then there's enhanced efficiency. You know, the average time to spend, average time spent by digital onboarding has drastically reduced by 30% thanks to AI. So these are like highlighting some of the potential of AI in our financial space today. 
Now let's track back to what and back to what we're thinking about fraud stars and fraudulent transactions. So what are financial crimes today? So there's financial crime and then there's compliance. Now financial crime is an any activity that involves financial gain by using illegal means. Even if it means hiding some processes from their victims, that is a financial crime. And then the compliance side, financial compliance is when organizations deploy you know, strategies to prevent financial crimes, strategies and reports to prevent any illegal activity. Now, the, some of the shocking statistics today is that there have been over 800 billion to 2 trillion of money in laundry globally. This is unprecedented and we are seeing this number increase yearly. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is this is not going to stop. We don't have the capacity, the human capacity to stop financial crimes and, and laundry. But we have a savior. I mean, I know it's a heavy word to say savior, but we have a tool that can actually help us prevent so many types of fraud. For example, phishing, identity theft. These are like one of the two, two basic and two core ways in a first start scheme to do financial crimes. Yeah. So phishing is, is basically an attempt to collect system information, username, password, bank information, etc. Identity theft. Identity theft involves stealing someone's personal information. Some first starts buy credit cards, debit cards, SSNs, IDs online on, on forums and pose as this as their victims. Now, how do we leverage AI to, to prevent this? Number one, for phishing, with advanced machine learning and algorithms, we can analyze patterns of communication, right? To identify any phishing attempts. There could be things like the algorithms that could check out for emails with suspicious subjects and, and contacts, and then this machine, this AI could alert that the, the, the owners or alerts companies, especially when this is targeted at employees of a particular company. And now for identity theft, we can leverage AI by using current and improving identity verification solutions today. I think there's a lot of room for improvements in identity verifications and AI is there for us to utilize this utilize it. Now, I know I've already identified about two. There are other types of, other types which are not, they are also important, but the two I initially mentioned are like the core. These are like the, usually the first steps, first starts, try to get that, gain access to the victims. Now, but there are other things like money moving, documents forgery, accounts takeover, and in the interesting one, which is most recent, is deep fake. We've seen the rise of generative AI, how it's easy to create deep fake even in videos and in voice. And it's scary, it's scary feature I had just as AI can be used for bad, it can also be used to checkmate this bad and checkmate evil persons that want to use it for that. Now, I, I want to take a, a breather and highlight some of the things I've seen, we've seen in, in, in Afra is my company, we've seen over 80% accuracy in flooding social engineering attempts in our platform. This is huge. In, le in, in less than three months, we deployed AI solutions to detect fraudulent activities, especially social engineering. We've seen, we've seen the patterns and we've identified those patterns and AI is just there to automate those patterns and catch them. And we've seen 80% accuracy. And we have saved over $1 million in fraudulent transactions in a very short period of time. And we've also seen reduction in false positives and investigative time that our compliance team leverage the transaction that being flagged by the activity that was flagged by our AI system. It has really give, redu reduced the investigation time for our compliance team. And I know I've already spoken about the processes or some of the activities for stats 
and years. But just to break down some of the co common victims we've seen, we've encountered 70 plus years adults, older adults 70 and above, we've seen fraudulent activities on this age group, we've seen from 18 to 34 years, we've seen from 34 to 50, and so on. So every age group, there's a specific, they are all targets. Everyone is a target, basically. Whether you're an older adult, single adult, adult or you're a target, and it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop anytime. So there have been surveys that sh showcase the certain types of age group that are susceptible to fraud, to fraud that are especially victims. You, you can check that on my slide and later. So to reiterate, I am very, I am super excited on how AI solution can combat financial crimes. It's a, it's an emerging space. Non, it's not a new, it's not a new space. We've seen new emerging technologies that are exciting to now advance the level of which previous AI detections is at. We can now detect anomaly, we can now do return monitoring, we can do predictive analytics, we can do network analytics and uh, with natural language processing, we can now see, you know, for example, someone who posed to be an African American but is speaking like an Asian American from identity theft. These are some of the things that AI can detect and from natural language processing and combat those that poses as other people. These are some of the, the exciting things we've seen out there. So to wrap up, these are my key takeaway. No one is in you. Everyone is, anyone, everyone can fall victim for fraud. Anyone can fall victim for fraud because criminals opportunities stick. They target individuals from all across every age group. Vulnerability vary also. But we need awareness and education. So we need to start um, empowering individuals with the knowledge on common scams, but at the same time, putting AI detection systems in place that would alert these individuals when something goes wrong so they can take preemptive actions. So these are some of the things I, I would like us to keep takeaways from this talk and things that, you know, I'm excited uh, to improve even in my company for others that are here. So thank you very much for listening so far. I hope you've learned one or two things on, and I'm excited. You can say I'm really excited on in this space and I'm hoping that I will see companies emerge that would efficiently leverage AI to combat uh, fraud, especially in social engineering fraud. Thank you very much. Uh, I remain in the BC John uh, and Berige. Uh, you can reach me out on my email, johnantafes.co. If you have any further questions or you want to chat or you find this talk interesting, you can visit my, my company website, afriaceapp.com. Afriace is a, is a platform that um, helps immigrants to send money back home from the US, UK, then over um, 20 countries now. Um, let's visit and I'm excited uh, for the future. Thank you very much.